Hi everyone, this is our second video on two-dimensional statistics and linear regression. So if you'd like an introduction to the subject, check out our earlier video. Okay, let's discover the maths. Consider two statistical variables, x and y defined on a sample of n individuals. So we're dealing with a pair of numerical values for each of the individuals in the sample, x1, y1, x2, y2, all the way up to xn, yn. We're going to introduce two parameters, the covariance and the correlation coefficient, with the aim of studying the relationship between the variables x and y. We'll also see how to obtain regression lines which allow us to estimate the value of one of the variables if we know the value of the other. We'll be working with tables. These tables will allow us not only to calculate the parameters corresponding to the variables x and y independently, but also to calculate the new parameters, the covariance and the correlation coefficient, that'll enable us to see how the two variables are related. In the tables, the first column will contain the data for x, xi, and the second, the corresponding data for y, yi. Each row will have the data for each individual. In the first row, we'll have the data for the first individual, x1, y1. In the second row, the data for the second individual, x2, y2, and so on, until we reach the data for the last individual, xn, yn. If the same values occur more than once, we'll include as many rows as there are repetitions. This works fine, providing we don't have too many repetitions. Otherwise, we'd need an extra column with the absolute frequencies. At the bottom of the two columns, we write the sum of the xi's and of the yi's. And from these, we can obtain the mean of x which is the sum of the xi's divided by the number of data items n, and the mean of y, which is the sum of the yi's divided by n. We could obtain the medians and the modes of x and y, but here we'll just go ahead and calculate the variances and the standard deviations of x and y. As you know, these are measures of dispersion, which indicate how spread out the data are with respect to the average. We'll now add two new columns in which we'll write the values of xi squared and yi squared. And at the bottom of these columns, we'll have the sum of the xi's squared and the yi's squared. From these sums, we can obtain the variances. The variance of x, sigma x squared, is the sum of the squared xi's divided by n minus the average of x squared. And likewise, the variance of y, sigma y squared, is the sum of the yi squared divided by n minus the mean of y squared. We can then obtain the standard deviations of x and y, sigma x and sigma y, which are just the square roots of the variances. If any of this isn't clear to you, then you'll need to review the basics of one-dimensional descriptive statistics. Now let's introduce the first of the coefficients that measure the relationship between the variables x and y, the covariance, which we'll denote by sigma xy. Covariance is the sum of the products of the corresponding data, xi times yi, divided by the number of data n minus the average of x times the average of y. To calculate it, we add a new column to the previous table in which we calculate the products of xi and yi and then write the sum of these at the bottom of the column. Then we put this value in the formula just mentioned to get the value of the covariance. If some data values occur more than once, then we must include them as many times as they appear. If they occur many times, then the way to do this would be to indicate the absolute frequencies. 
What is the covariance? What does it mean? First of all, positive and large values of the covariance sigma xy indicate the tendency that if one variable increases, so does the other. But remember, this is a trend and not necessarily true for all data. Second, negative and large values of covariance indicate a tendency that when the value of one of the variables increases, the other decreases. Finally, values close to zero indicate that there's little relationship between the variables x and y. In other words, the variables are more or less independent. Covariance presents a problem in that it's sensitive to changes in scale, which complicates the interpretation of its values. This is why we bring in another new parameter, the correlation coefficient. But before we do that, remember that as well as studying the relationship between two statistical variables, our goal is also to predict what the value of one variable is going to be when we know the value of the other. In an ideal situation, from the graphical representation of the data pairs, or what's called the data cloud, we'd obtain a function that passes through all the data, or that somehow resembles the data cloud. This function could serve us for our purpose of making predictions, or rather estimates. We'll work here with straight lines, in other words, polynomials of degree one. This is known as linear regression finding a line that looks like the point cloud. But that approach is ambiguous. What criteria will we adopt? Without going into detail, we'll try to find a line so that the sum of the squares of the vertical distances between each point and the line is minimal. The straight lines obtained by this criterion are called regression lines. Before introducing these lines, we're going to introduce this new parameter, the correlation coefficient, which, like covariance, is a way to see the relationship between these statistical variables. We'll denote the correlation coefficient by the letter r. Its expression is very simple. It's the covariance divided by the products of the typical deviations of x and y. Remember that we obtained the covariance from the previous table, and from this we can also obtain the standard deviations, and from all this, the value of the correlation coefficient. Not only will the correlation coefficient, like the covariance, allow us to see the relationship between the variables x and y, it'll also tell us how well the linear regression line fits the cloud of data points. An advantage of the correlation coefficient over covariance is that it has a value between minus 1 and 1. The covariance, by contrast, can be large, positive or negative, with the ambiguity that this introduces. If the correlation coefficient is close to 1 or minus 1, this indicates that the regression line approximates well to the point cloud. And in this case, the predictions we make using the regression line will be good. More specifically, if the correlation coefficient is close to 1, we say that there's a direct correlation, which indicates a tendency that if one variable grows, so does the other, or if one variable decreases, then the other one does too. If the correlation coefficient is close to minus 1, on the other hand, this indicates an inverse correlation. In this case, as one variable increases, the other decreases. Or reciprocally, if one goes down in value, the other goes up. If the correlation coefficient is close to zero, then the variables x and y are essentially independent. So we can't use the regression lines to make any reliable predictions. There are two lines of regression. The regression line of y on x is defined by the equation y minus the mean of y is equal to the covariance, sigma xy, divided by the variance of x, sigma x squared, times x minus the mean of x. We can use this line to obtain predictions of y when we have values for x. There's also the regression line of y on x, 
defined by x minus the mean of x equals the covariance sigma xy divided by the variance of y, sigma y squared, times y minus the mean of y. And we can use this to get predictions of x when we have known values of y. Hope you enjoyed this and that you got something out of it and that you'll join me again soon to discover more maths.